Hello all, it's Ryan here from RLF Vacuum Cleaners and Lake and Heath and then today we're going to be talking about tools and I'm going to have a mini tool bag tour. Uh, this is the smallest tool bag I have. This is all my main tools. I don't know if you know, I work as a lecturer mechanical engineer. I work on a lot of machinery, going big into hot beverage machines. This is core tools, this is about 80% of the tools I use day to day. And I don't know if anyone's ever been in places where they have coffee machines, there's not a lot of room. So I have my tiny little tool bag, which is small enough to fit on most counters, so I can have my tools ready to hand. Start off with screwdrivers. Now I have lots of different screwdrivers in here. I'll explain which ones I have and why I have them. Start off with, we have a number two. I don't know how that comes on the camera. We have a number two Phillips screwdriver. That pretty much covers everything we do. Non-VDE. I have a Klein Tools VDE number two Phillips. For when you're doing electrical work, usually working on terminal blocks, etc. And we have a Weira number one Phillips. Again, not so commonly used. As you can see, it's a lot cleaner than the number two. But the machines do have quite a lot of small screws with number one heads on. Then we have flat blades. These are just some cheapy flat blades that I've got. As you can see, these are VDE rated, but at the price they were, mm, a bit sketchy. But you know, flat blades are flat blades. So I've got a little one here. Oh, little terminal drivers, they call it. And two slightly bigger ones. They come in handy for those little prying jobs. Sometimes occasionally come across some flat bladed screws. Jolly handy little tools. Cheap, dispensable. Then we come on to pliers. Just a standard set of VDE pliers. And then we've got a set of VDE cutters. Big cutters. We also have a pair of cheapy electrical snips. They come in handy for snipping wires, cable ties, you know, just general stuff. Then we're going to move on to spanners. Right, spanners. Spanners, lots of, I have lots of different types of spanners. They all have lots of different uses. We'll start off with the smallest. This is my smallest one, pretty handy one. This is a 6mm one. Uh, none of the stuff I ever work on has 6mm, but when we work with plastic pipe, 2 and 4mm plastic pipe with push fit connectors, you need that's a perfect size end, push the push fit connector in and you can pull the pipe out. So that's what I use that on for. Blum and handy tool. And then we'll move up to a 10. You know, 10 is a pretty standard size. If you haven't got a 10, well pretty much everything I'll ever work on has a 10 mil. Comes in jolly handy. And then of course you've got your 14, your 13, and your 12. Again, they're all pretty standard sizes. That's what you need. And then we'll move up to your bigger ones. You've got your 17 and your 19. Again, pretty standard sizes. You use these quite regularly. And then we move up to the big one. You have an adjustable spanner. Gets you a lot of trouble. And then we have a 22mm spanner. These, This one only has one job. It comes in blubber handy. It's for when you're doing solenoid valve plungers. They have a 22mm plunger set in a 22 or set in a housing with a 22mm head on it so you use that to undo them. Then we'll move on to these are some specialised pliers. Quite expensive but they are well worth the money. It's made by NWS. I don't know why that comes up on there. NWS. But I notice I don't know focus. They got a little cutout on the end. Now that cutout, oh, that's better than that. That cutout is exactly the right size. This one's exactly the right size for two mil piping. So when you're working on more of the newer compact machines, where they have lots of different pipes that go to lots of different push fit connectors, you can't always get your fingers in. If you've got wet fingers, you just aren't going to grip it. This grips the pipe absolutely lovely. Grips it, and then you can. Push it into the push fit connector, that's a 2mm one. And there's a slightly bigger 4mm one. 
well worth the money. Right, next we're going to move on to sockets. I always carry around this quarter inch barco set, fits in my tool bag, lovely, comes to all the standard sizes. Because then to small, goes to big. Uh, I keep my 8 mile spanner in, in here, because majority of the time when you're doing socket work, on one particular type of machine, when you're using a, you use an 8mm and a 10mm socket, but you also need an 8mm spanner because one of the bolts is the right pig to get to. So keep my spanner in there, so if I have to do one particular job, I can take my socket set out and I've got all my tools ready. These are pretty good kits, yeah, about 20 quid. They're not expensive, but they do come in jolly handy. Right, now we'll move on to some of the more specialised tools. Uh, this is a quarter inch handle with a deep 13 mil again this is a very specialized tool for one particular job but again it makes life invaluable you need that deep 13 mil socket then we move on to this here we have a we're at 2.5 mil allen key allen oh, allen key end I don't know how that's going to focus but again when you're working on three wave diaphragm valves this is what you need to get them apart. Absolutely invaluable tool. Or I go for the small headed one because then diaphragm valves are mini made out of plastic. And if you do them up too tight, they do crack. With this little handle, you can do them up just right every single time. Of course, got just a cheap generic scraper for scraping. Come in pretty handy. And we've got a big pair of adjustable adjustable grips, they come in jolly handy, especially when you work on some of the bigger stuff, you want to grip it nice and tight and do something jolly handy. And we've got a wire brush, you know, just a standard small cheapy wire brush, nothing particularly special here, come in jolly handy for cleaning stuff up. And then we've got this, just a standard generic pipe cutter. This one's pretty good, because a lot of places don't allow you to have standing knives. This, effectively, you put your pipe in there. I'm going to put my finger in there, a bit dodgy. Put your pipe in there, squash it down, cuts it, get a beautiful end every single time. Absolutely lovely. And we've got a paintbrush. Paintbrush, you know, you're doing a little dusting, cleaning off. This paintbrush is you know, starting to get a bit frayed and worn. Might, might replace that for a new one bristles are starting to come out but paintbrush doing a little cleaning bit getting into all the little nooks and crannies and crevices get me coffee grounds and dust and all sorts of stuff that accumulates up another one permanent marker I use the sharpie ones well I always use the sharpie ones I tend to find they're a bit better they probably are cheaper permanent markers but then again don't really go through many permanent ones. I might maybe go for one or two a year. So, I always think they're good. They're not that expensive. Buy them from Tool Station. I think they come in. You know, I can't remember how much they were, but you can buy them from Tool Station. They usually have deals on them every now and then. I always buy two or three. Uh, basic multimeter. This is a Fluke 101. I hopefully one day I get around to it. I'm making a video on this. This is a cheap basic multimeter. I bought this online, £40, £40 for a fluke multimeter. And to be fair, I'll give you a quick review of it. It's, it's okay. As multimeters go, it's good. But you'll have to watch the review video for a full in-depth review. Everyone who I ever meet says, oh, you got drug dealer scales, just a little set of scales for measuring things. Don't need to be too big, because obviously too big won't fit in my little tool bag. But pretty good if you want to do calibrations on machines. Stick something on there, measure measure coffee grounds, measure weight of water. Pretty good. When working with steam and tea and hot water systems, just a basic cheap thermo pen, just a digital one. Measure temperature, temperature's going up, 
just to measure temperature. It doesn't need to be a million, doesn't need to be like 100% accurate, just give you a rough idea. Pretty good tool. I have dropped this so many times in water that's sort of 75, 80 degrees, and it's still working today. Obviously, it's got a bit of a crack on the screen, but. Does me does me good does me good this is the amount of times this has been submerged in water and it's managed to survive. Pretty good. And then we just use the tough belt tool pack. Uh, they come with a little quick release catch. I oh, have a catch on my belt and I've got a catch in the van to lock these up. And then I don't know how to show in the front. This is where you look you throw all your odds and sods, you know, your nuts. Your bolts, screws, you know, you've got that here. Somewhere here, you got this, uh, don't know how that shows up on there, just random screws. Stuff that you accumulate whenever you fit a new piece of equipment. You know, certainly your pilot rails and new bits of tube. What they do is they send you a new screw, and majority of times, put the new screw on and it gives you the old one. Or if you're feeling particularly brave. You put the old one back in. Majority of the time, the old screws are alright. You know, it's just a general throwing in crap bit. You know, you've got bits of cable tie. That's why I'm emptying it today. Emptying it today, getting all the old rubbish out of there. Because so you do accumulate lots of rubbish. You know, these little pipe brushes. Go through loads of these little pipe brushes, and this one's getting a bit worn at the end, so I'll be replacing that as well. And of course, you know, you've got your pens. Small fine line mark if I can get it out. And you just have a you know, small fine line marker. And that is day to day, 80% of the tools you use. I have a bigger tool bag, big racks like I carry around for the tools I don't use that often. You know, things like hammers, 11 mil spanner, you know, things that you need but not so often. And of course, when I get round to it, I will do a quick, in-depth, well, just a quick, what I carry in my big tool bag. 